Hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean, and I bet y'all know that I'm a newlywed. I bet you don't know that my son Jamie is too. In fact, I've got him here in the kitchen with me today to help me prepare some simple dishes that have just a little touch of romance to them. The first thing that Jamie and I are gonna make is my shrimp and scallop fresh that just literally melts in your mouth. And then we're gonna be preparing my rich and creamy chicken divan. Every new cook should have this recipe. And of course, you know, us newlyweds can't survive without a dessert. So I'm gonna be making my luscious lemon cake with a seven minute frosting. Now how's that for fast and delicious? So you take out those shiny new pots and pans, y'all, and join us in the kitchen, cause today we're gonna be cooking for all us newlyweds. cooking today, y'all. Just the thought of today's show, talking about it, getting the menus up for today, made me soft and gooshy inside. Because guess what the title and the theme of today's show is? It's all about newlyweds. <laughs> Which Jamie and I happen to be newlyweds. And he's even a newer newlywed than I am. <sighs> How long now? Listen to him. He's like a sick puppy. Uh, almost uh, three months. Almost three months. But you know, I can understand because you've got a beautiful, beautiful, mm. sweet wife. Greatest day of my life. I'm so glad. And you know what? 50 years from now, I hope y'all feel the same way about each other. 50 years for me and Michael, I don't <laughs> think we'll ever make it. But you know what? I'm planning on celebrating our, our marriage by the month. So hopefully we'll make 50 months. <laughs> Cause I don't think I'll be around in 50 years. Well son, let's get started with today's meal. And you know what? I thought the first dish that we would do would be the shrimp and scallop fresh. Now we're gonna start by making a creme fraiche. And it sounds like a very fancy title, but it's so, so simple. We're gonna take one cup of heavy whipping cream Okay, you're gonna have to walk me through this. I've never done this before. Oh, well, it's just really, really nothing to it. And then we're gonna stir two tablespoons of sour cream into the heavy cream. And then we're just gonna cover it and set it out on the counter, leave it at room temperature for 12 to 24 hours. And it's gonna thicken and it's gonna be delicious. And this is what we're gonna use to finish off our dish. Now over here, I'm gonna melt a half a stick of butter. All right, so while our butter's melting, Jamie, if you would take our shrimp and scallops mm -hmm. and just season them, please, with okay. the salt and pepper. All right, now to this, Jamie, I'm gonna add the juice of one lemon and three cloves of fresh minced garlic. What we're gonna do at this point is we're just gonna saute off our seafood. Mm -hmm. And you'll wanna start with the scallops because they're bigger than the shrimp and they'll take a little longer. So you're just you're gonna eyeball these to when they're done? Yeah. How, are we gonna cook these all the way through? Or? No, they're done now. In fact, you can take them up. I have you a slotted spoon over there okay. and just dip them up and put them in that plate. Will you turn that fire off? Okay, and just make sure you leave all that juice in there. Those smell so good. Yeah. We're gonna quickly finish up this dish. All right, son, I got your little chicken stock right there. Mm -hmm. I've got you some cornstarch. Mm -hmm. We're gonna mix that with the chicken stock. This is just a slurry that's gonna tighten up our sauce. All right, now I have a little cognac here, and I'm gonna pour that in. And then I'm going to add a half a cup of the creme fraiche. And if I need to, then I'll add some more in a minute. 
Now let's just put your shrimp and scallops back. Mm -hmm. Back in there, just dump them in there. I think I'm gonna just add a little basil to this. And we're gonna taste it and I'll fix us some angel hair pasta or whatever kind of pasta you want in a little while. How's that? Sounds good. Just a little mm. bit for me. Gosh. Just a little bit for me. <laughs> There's not gonna be any left for Brooke and Michael. Well, we love them, but let's don't take it too far. <laughs> Cheers, Mom. Cheers to you, son. And congratulations. On what? Newlywed. Oh, thank you. Same to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. 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 Mm. 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 I love this. And it's very easy. You can you can teach Brooke how to cook this in two minutes. In fact, speaking of easy dishes, mm. coming up next, I want to share. A, uh, an old, old recipe that's been around for a long, long time, and it's called Chicken Divan. And every new bride should have this recipe in her files. He's gonna be so impressed when you pull out that dish. Welcome back, y'all. In case you've just tuned in, you're in the kitchen with Jamie and his mama, and we're being real, real soppy and sentimental today because today's show is all about newlyweds, and Jamie and I both qualify for that, don't we? We sure do. <laughs> uh, the next recipe that I want to share with you, if you're courting or if you're a newlywed, you're going to want to put this recipe in your files. It's so good. It's one of those old, reliable recipes, and it's called Chicken Divan. So I have cooked a chicken, and I have picked it clean of skin and bones. I've got six cups of chicken here. I've got two 10-ounce packages of chopped frozen broccoli. You'll want to make sure that you drain that good in a colander and press the water out of it because you, you don't want this dish to be... Um, Super wet. No, you don't want it to be real, real watery. Mm -hmm. So, Jamie, if you would mix up the sauce part, I'm gonna spray our pan. Okay. I'm taking my broccoli and I've squeezed out all the excess water. And I'm gonna press that down and then I'm gonna put my chicken in. Okay, Jamie, you've got your mushroom soup. Two you've got your mayonnaise. Yep. Cup of mayonnaise, cup, cup of, of sour, sour cream. cream. Cheddar cheese. I love cheese. A half a cup of white wine. A tablespoon of lemon juice. And the key ingredient to chicken divan, and that's gonna be one teaspoon of curry powder. All right, and you'll mix that up the lemon juice and the wine are going to give it a little sharp flavor. Mm -hmm. So it definitely needs some salt and pepper. Don't you think? Whoa. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the wine, but that'll mellow out, though, as the dish cooks. All right. Now, right here, I've got a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese, and I've got a half a cup of fresh breadcrumbs. And I've got a couple of tablespoons of melted butter. And I'm going to just drizzle that over our cheese and crumbs. You could just put slices of butter on top. But I love mixing mine in so that every one of those crumbs gets some butter. That curry is a powerful flavor. Curry is very, very powerful, y'all. If you're not sure if you like it or not, you'll want to add just a little bit at the time. 
because it's very, very powerful. You want me to be topping this while you're doing that? Please, just pour that over a casserole and then we'll top it with our crumbs. Okay, if you'll put the crumbs on this, everything in this dish is done. It's not gonna have to cook, it's just gonna have to heat all the way through and we'll want it hot and bubbly. So we're gonna put this in the oven, 350, preheated oven, and we're gonna bake it until it's hot and bubbly and that'll probably take about, because of the depth of our dish, it'll probably take about 45 minutes. It's a thick dish. All right, son, if you wanna put that in the oven and I've got another one over here ready to show everybody, just slip this one in and I'll take, I'll take this one out. Look how pretty that looks. Now the thing I like about chicken divan is you can kind of change it around a little bit. I top this one with fresh uh, breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese, but I have to tell you, I really, really, really dig my divans topped with like a Gruyere or a cheddar, but there's just something about that cheese. Oh, look at the steam. But of course, we've got some cheddar cheese inside of it. Does that look good or what? Gracious. Mm. Oh, and some yummy rice. And, and you're all set because you've got your meat, you got your vegetables. Yeah, and I'm so full of scallops and shrimp, I just have to fight through it. <laughs> I know it, me too. You take the biggest bite, son. I got a big mouth. Mmm. Mmm. Isn't this yummy, son? Mmm. It is so good. It brings back memories. Mmm. Speaking of memories, mm. I'm gonna be doing a lemon cake. It's a very old <laughs> southern recipe, so please don't leave us. I want y'all to be here while we're making that lemon cake. So we'll see you back in a minute. You couldn't have a wedding show without something sweet, could you, son? Can't. Mm. Can't. Well, this is a very simple cake. It's called a one, two, three, four cake. Yep. We're gonna use one cup of butter, okay. two mm -hmm. cups of sugar, mm -hmm. three cups of flour, and four eggs. Sounds good. One, two, three, four. So I want you to start by putting your butter in there, adding your sugar, and beating it till it's creamy. Okay. And then to that, I want you to add one egg at the time. Okay. And then alternately, I want you to add your self-rising flour that's been sifted. I want you to begin with your flour and end with your flour. Otherwise, your batter won't be as creamy. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna make the, the filling for this lemon cake. And I'm gonna take this other half a stick of butter. Because the cake is kind of a, a simple cake. This is what really sets it apart. All the flavors yeah. and the icing and the filling. I use this basic recipe, Jamie, to make so many cakes. All right, I'm gonna add a cup and a half of sugar. And I'm gonna need eight egg yolks. I've got six already in the bowl. This is kind of looking like butter. Is this creamy enough Good, to add yeah, eggs? You, you want it really, really nice and creamy. and then add one egg at a time and let it just cream up after every egg. All right, I'm gonna toss in eight egg yolks, and I'm not gonna have to temper these because our dish is completely cold right now, but I'm safe there. So we're gonna stir that into the sugar and butter. I'm gonna add the juice of three lemons and the zest of three lemons. So this filling is gonna be real, real tart. So I'm gonna stir this over a rolling bowl until it gets thick. How are you doing, son? That's you the got last the cake of the drop. ready? Well, that works out perfect because my lemon filling is done and I'm gonna take this off and move it to the side because we have to let this cool. Okay, Mom, so I'm gonna put these batter in these uh, mm -hmm. 
All you need to do now, I greased and floured your pans for you. All you want to do is evenly divide your batter, and that's very important mm -hmm. that it be as even as you can possibly get it. And while you're doing that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to make our divinity icing. In my double boiler over here, son, I have a cup and a half of sugar, a fourth of a teaspoon of cream of tartar. I'm just going to stir that together. I've got the whites of two eggs. I'm going to stir that in. And then I'm going to add a third of a cup of just plain old tap water. And then I'm going to beat this for seven minutes. And I want to show you a trick now. When you're preparing your cakes for the oven, mm -hmm. I like to drop them. And that will cause the air bubbles to rise to the top. And you can see the bubbles coming to the top after you drop it. It's a neat trick. Isn't that a neat trick? All right, now what I need you to do now is put those in the oven. We're going to put them on a 350 degree preheated oven. We're going to bake them for about 25 minutes. And when you put your pans in there, make sure that the pans don't touch each other. Why's that? I don't know. It may be an old wives' tale, but Mama and Grandma just told me not to let them touch. So I don't let them touch. All right, I've already got three cakes out of the oven that's cool. Okay. You can bring that rack over here, and if you would, you be stacking the cakes together on our cake stand and filling them with the lemon filling, and the lemon filling's right over there. All right, now I wanna just show you a, a little thing that really helps me when I'm doing cakes. I dabble just a little bit of that filling or icing, whatever I'm doing with it. Like a tasty glue. Yeah, yeah, and it doesn't take but just a little drop, just enough to kind of hold your, your cake in place. That's great. All right, so pick up your cakes, and take your hands and run around the side to get rid of the loose crumbs. Mm -hmm. See if it's in the center. Perfect. All right. And then you'll want to make sure you have some toothpicks handy when you get ready to stack the other one so our cake won't look like the leaning towel of peas on us. If you want to, you can poke your, your cake with a fork, and that'll allow that lemon filling to go down in there. So I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla right here at the end. And if you would just help me by lifting this bowl out of here for me. Make sure it's not too hot for you now. OK. I'm just going to bring it right over here and just beat it for a couple of minutes until I have that vanilla. This looks dumb, Mom. Huh? How about that? That's perfect. Looks delicious. All right, I'm going to start icing our cake. And I like to start by dropping some icing in a dollop on the side of the cake. And then I just kind of let it calm down just like that. We got to take a quick break, son. And while we're on break, if you would get me some lemons ready for garnish. And when we come back, y'all, I'm going to have this cake all frosted. And then I want to share a tip with you that makes a great gift for newlyweds. And it won't break the bank. So I'll see y'all in a minute. You know, when you get married, these little newlyweds, they're young and don't necessarily have a lot of money and need everything from, oh gosh, a recipe down to a trash can. Well, my tip for you today is to go out, first of all, pick out your favorite recipe. Go buy a casserole dish, buy all the ingredients, pile it into the casserole dish along with the recipe, and everything that you're going to need to put that recipe together and I'm going to include some beautiful little measuring spoons that signify love. They'll treasure it forever, along with that handwritten favorite recipe that came just from you. Well, guess what time it is, Jamie? Oh. 
it's time to close this show. And I've had so much fun being here with you. Thanks for having me, Mom. Oh, listen, it's been great being in the kitchen with you and uh, cooking all these wonderful dishes. The chicken divan, you know, it's just got to go in a, in a new cook's file. And the shrimp and scallops fresh is so good. It looks like you've really, really gone to a lot of trouble. And of course, you know, if those two dishes don't get them, mm. this lemon cake is a shoe-in. But I would like to propose a toast to you and Brooke before we close the show. May y'all always love each other as passionately at the end of your time together as you did the first day that you became man and wife. Oh, thanks, Mom. And until next time, I send y'all love and best dishes to all you newlyweds out there. Next time. <laughs>